the ROG phone. Months back, I managed to get an hour or so with this one in Taiwan and ever since I've been trying to get my hands on it. Finally, the wait's over. In this video, let's unbox this beauty and take a close look at what Asus have done with their gaming beast. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get started. If you do end up liking what you see, don't forget to turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. And in case you've not checked it out, well, here's a card to a monthly giveaway. Now this is the box the ROG phone comes in. It's unique, I've never seen something quite like this for a smartphone. Opening it up. First, the ROG phone itself looks unique, amazing, can't wait to get to it. Let me turn it on and set it aside and get to the rest of the stuff. So here's the Aeroactive Cooler. This is an extra fan that kind of helps the ROG phone sustain peak performance for longer. And with this comes a small flaw. Asus are claiming that the ROG phone is water resistant. No IP rating or anything, but they are calling it water resistant. And maybe that's why they are providing a rubber grommet for the side ports. It is quite difficult to pull out and I'm sure a lot of people uh, might end up misplacing it. Now this is where the Aero Active Cooler gets connected and once it is connected we get a Type-C port and a headphone jack for landscape orientation. The regular Type-C and headphone jack are present but at the bottom. Now this is kind of nice to get it on two different places you know most brands are struggling to throw in one headphone jack. Uh, Asus is kind of providing two which makes it really good. Now we have a secondary microphone up top, the power and volume keys along with another mic to the right and apart from the dual type C ports, the left also houses the dual SIM tray, no micro SD. Anyway, getting back to the box contents, Asus seems to have also realized that people will lose the grommet so they have thrown in a couple extra, nice. Then there's a 30 watt charger, a Type-C to Type-C cable cause the charger like with the one on the Pixel 3 has Type-C to the back. We then have a SIM tool, IME, i stickers and the regular quick start guide. So that's pretty much everything that's in the box. Now coming to the ROG phone, I absolutely adore how it looks. It's so unique, so different compared to anything on the market. The glass to the back, the vents, the LED, oh yeah the LED, not just on the back but even on the cooler. It's roughly the size of a Pixel 3 XL but it is a little thicker and heavier. You will surely appreciate the extra weight since this one's got a 4000 mAh battery inside. Now compared to the 3XL, the ROG phone does have a smaller display, that's cause this one doesn't go for a notch, which on a gaming phone might not make a lot of sense. The display is a 6 inch panel, it's 18 by 9 and it is AMOLED. The resolution is full HD+, and to live up to the gaming phone tag, the panel has a 90Hz refresh rate. This display looks splendid, it's fantastic, it's got a 1 millisecond response time, covers a white color camera, it supports HDR. So all that's good. Now it's not just the build and design or the display that is good or unique. What Asus is offering underneath the hood is too. They are calling it Game Cool, a carbon cooling pad, a large copper heat spreader and a huge 3D vapor chamber to maintain sustained performance. It is worth noting that the Aeroactive cooler goes right over this 3D vapor chamber and helps not let the heat cause the chip inside to throttle. Asus claims the ROG phone can sustain peak performance for 5 times as long as a regular flagship and it did fare very well in my first few hours with it. I played continuously for over 45 minutes with the Aeroactive cooler on and the phone was very cool. The temperatures were under 40 degrees which was great but of course I'm gonna have to test it more and without the Aeroactive cooler as well. So right now let's leave that you know put it under the list of things that we're gonna talk about in the full review. Now forgetting all that, the chip inside, that's unique too. Yes, it's a Snapdragon 845, we've seen it on a lot of phones including Asus's own Zenfone 5C but this one is speed bend. So it hits a clock speed of 2.96 GHz. It is also paired with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 or 512 gigs of onboard storage which is quite important since the ROG phone does not support microSD expansion. The stereo front firing speakers aren't unique but they are the loudest I've come across. Yes, the Pixel 3 XL has stereo audio as well, but this is leaps and bounds louder. It's kind of full as well. The audio via the headphone jack that I tried out via the Zenova Ocala 
that was great too. By the way, you could get a ROG headset and sync up LED. Yep, it's all Aura Sync capable. And remember the 30 watt charger we saw during the unboxing? Now there's an IC included here. It is there so the phone doesn't get heated up while charging and Asus claims the ROG phone can go from 0 to 60 in just 30 minutes. Now remember that's with a 4000 mAh battery. On the software side of things, we've got a custom ROG UI on top of Android 8.1 Oreo. Kinda feels like a tweaked version of Zen UI, but there are quite a few unique features, cool features included like the X mode, which is a gaming mode triggered via a squeeze. Cool, right? The animations neat, the user interface feels really fast and snappy. And talking about trigger, we get air triggers. So we can map different points to a kind of shoulder trigger. It's quite nice. For example, with PUBG, I have left trigger to aim, right trigger to shoot, just like I would with a regular controller. So now, moving on from all that, let's talk cameras. It's the same sense of from the 5G, the super popular IMX363 that's on a bucket load of uh, quite good phones you know phones that are known for their cameras but this one kind of gets a different lens to go with it from the 5c this is a lens with a f1.7 aperture there is ois the secondary shooter is a 8 megapixel f2.2 with a 120 degree field of view given the setup is similar to the 5c i feel the camera should do quite well of course i don't expect it to be a pixel or iphone 10s beta but usually cameras are an afterthought on gaming phones but asus have used probably the best hardware at their disposal so really good to see the brand trying to leave no stone unturned i did like the images that came out of this setup here are a few more samples and now let me play a tiny little clip from my rog hands-on from taiwan they are not just building a rog phone they're building an rog gaming ecosystem for phones so do you like streaming? Well, here you go, the twin view dock. Game ergonomically, and you can check out the comments. By the way, this dock comes with a 6000 mAh battery built in. And then there's a mobile desktop dock. This one lets you map any part of the display to the keyboard and mouse. Definitely gives you a very competitive advantage when it comes to gaming. In my time with it, it felt smooth and lag free. That's a theme here. With other brands in the past, I've felt things were good, but felt first gen ish. But that's not the case here with ROG. Asus seem to have leveraged the ROG gaming experience for mobile. They've done it quite well here. And nothing feels really first gen -y, if that's a word. It all feels very polished. And Asus still were not done. There's more. There's GameWise. Snaps right on and kind of makes the ROG phone into a Switch. Guys, as a reviewer, I've played Asphalt 8 over a thousand times. The same damn track for testing over and over again to show you guys on camera for various different phones. But I've never felt it play smoother than when I did while testing this. The controls were super responsive. Again, you get to map things out. Then there is the Asus YGEG dock to let you stream lag free to any device with an HDMI port. So these are accessories sold separately, of course, but I'm happy to see such a strong ecosystem made available right at launch. Of course, I don't have those accessories with me, but I thought they should still be mentioned on this video, hence the clip. Anyway, I can't wait to spend more time with the ROG phone. It seems exciting. We are hearing rumors of Asus launching this in India soon, but when and at what price? We have no official information on that just yet. So stay tuned to c 4 e Tech and I will keep you guys updated. So that's it for this unboxing and first look at the Asus ROG phone. Are you excited? In case you've not noticed it, I surely am. Anyway, thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about this video. Subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on any of our daily content. And I guess that's it. It's time I bid you adieu. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.